It is time for a 1v1 in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the map to Nero. My opening was picking Gondor and I wanted to pick Isengard because I believe that's a very nice matchup between good and evil Gondor versus Isengard. I personally enjoy this matchup a lot. So, Isengard. Build the Uruk pit and use the first Urukai from, you know, from the beginning of the game to grab the settlement. Also pick up the Vorchan from the spellbook. Very important. This is kind of like an automatic start from Isengard against good factions like Rohan and Gondor. You could also start with a Uruk pit and a Furnace, but I personally don't like to do that, especially on the map Dune Hero, because you have like really safe early Lamrimias, which is extremely hard for the opening to reach at the beginning of the game. Okay. So, we need to recruit additional Urukai to get the Uruk pit to level 2 as soon as possible, because in this matchup, we will definitely need some pikemen to counter the Gondonites. Additional Lamrimil workers, let's use one of them and send him to the bottom right side. And we gotta catch those Gondonites, uh, Gondor soldiers, before they actually can reach out to us. Very important, and we need to use the Urukai for that, as the Urukai are the fastest swordsmen in the entire game, also the strongest. Okay, so we gotta fight them. And I don't wanna capture this mill at the beginning, because the mill is in a kinda tricky situation. Our opponent might use the troll there, and use the troll to lure the troll to our, you know, Lamry mill. It would be not a good situation, and for that reason. Let's not use Warchant, he might use Alvin Woods here. I don't wanna waste my Warchant. No way! <laughs> oh, that's tilting! I wanted to move, but he's on horse player, you know, my units are not listening, you know, as I'm telling them what to do, they have like a delay. Now we gotta move on. Luckily, I'm happy that we were not using Vorchan at least, and we can kind of pressure now the farmer a little bit, and also look out for the second soldier with the Hobbit, just in case he might go for the creeping. Let's check the goblin layer, the second one on the left side, and in the meantime, keep recruiting more and more Urukai. Okay, we gotta peel back, let's fight him. When we are not on the Alvin Wood, we will win the 1v1 situation. When we are on the Alvin Wood, he will have armor bonus and we won't be able to win. So he's not creeping, what is he actually doing? Let's bring one more Urukai to turn the situation into a 2v1 situation. This way we can even fight him on the Alvin Wood. I mean, it doesn't look very good for us guys, not gonna lie. Our uh, resource income could be much, much better. We have only 2 out of 3 possible mills under our control. Which is kinda meh. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's also not the end of the world. I'm kind of washed up a little bit, guys. I was not playing 1v1s now for a really long time, you know? Let's creep this by ourselves. By the settlement. Now we have, again, three Lamry Mills. Very, very nice. Lamry Mills are the main and primary resource income from the evil factions like Isengard and Mordor at the beginning of the game. And also giving us the wood bonus, making our structures just cheaper. Now it's a 2v1 situation, but he's AC'ing. Like, he's pressing S on his soldiers. You can see that we are not able to hit them properly. Which is considered as a cheat, but I don't want to say anything, you know? I want to just have fun. <laughs> because you see, like, many of our Urukai are not able to attack. We need to micro all the time. As he's pressing S on his soldiers. And this way he can make my units buggy. Which is like a bad thing. Don't do that. <laughs> just fight, like a man. He has now Hobbit. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's bad because now... Uh, yeah. Now we will not be able to kill this farm. But what we can do is use the Urukai to send him to send them to the troll layer in the worst case scenario to just. Oh, I was also cash looting. Build more furnaces. They're gonna lose the spider, am I right? Yeah. It's fine though. Let's kill the farm at the top right side. We have still three mills under our control. Look, he has a level 2 soldier now. Are you kidding me? Okay, now we gotta, we gotta bring the troll, guys. We gotta bring the troll. This should never happen, by the way. Like, you could not kill or hit them, you know? He's smart, he's, you know, dodging with the soldiers. He knows the farm is gonna be taken down. And now our Urukpit is gonna be level 2. I'm assuming we need to get at least one Berserk on the field just to be able to deal with the soldier. So let's do that. And then we will start recruiting and spamming Pikemen, Pikemen, Pikemen all the time. Because it's not only about def defending ourselves, it's also about destroying enemy farms. Very important to cut down the resource income from the Gondor player. Otherwise, it's going to be painful in long term. So he will also grow rich. And he might also spam lots of trebuchet on us, which is not fun to play against. Trust me on that one. Okay, so more and more pikemen. We have not the greatest eco right now, but that's about to be changed. 
Tremios, almost full bees. When it comes to play this matchup, I personally like to play it a bit more aggressively, you know? With that, I want to build a Siege Vorix and go for the Rams and attack his bees as soon as possible. Because Gondor in late game is pain to deal with. It's because Gondor is just like very, very powerful summons, like Rohan summon, Alvin summon, Eagle summon, Army of the Dead, of course, which is an army killing ability from the good factions like Gondor and Rohan. But yeah, hopefully we will be able to finish this game before this is gonna happen. More, more pikemen. Let's creep the work now with the war chant. He has a hobbit hitting very hard. Oh my goodness. Where is the soldier battalion, by the way? He had a level 2 soldier. Did he actually send them back to the bees? Which is pretty smart, by the way. Because you can use them later on to kill my pikemen. Okay. Let's creep at least. Let's pressure now his farms. Just get more pikemen on the field. We can also capture the outpost at the bottom right side. Close to our castle. And this way we can build now, you know, three more furnaces. Just to grow rich a bit faster. Let's do that actually. We have money now to buy it. It's gonna cost us 600. Creep this. Just focus on the lair. It's not about, you know, surviving with the Urukai. It's about creeping this so Gondor can't creep. And we also can get some additional money and resources. Buy. And then build multiple furnaces on this area. So now we gotta be fast. Punish him. Take down his farms. And creep at the same time. Multitasking is the key to victory in this matchup. Especially on a map like Dunhero, which is pretty big, you know? Let's use the formation. Furnace, furnace, furnace. Nice. Now we have lots of furnaces. Still two mills. But we will get more mills. In very very soon after killing those farms and he will need some archers or some soldiers to deal with that and if you don't know evil factions like Isengard they are also getting power points as they are losing stuff so for example we're gonna lose pikemen we're gonna lose Urukai we will also gain power points for that okay more pikemen boys just spam pikemen yes hobbit there I, I will not be able to capture this and we could go for the industry from the spellbook, but I want to actually go for the Tainted Land just to be able to cover his next Elven Wood. Okay, he was able to get away, luckily for him. But we are doing a good job now. Oh, never mind, he was able to sneak one of the Gondor Knights to our side, which is not the best thing in the world, but it's fine. Now let's send one of the pikemen to the bottom left side. With the Warch and we can also creep the Warclear. Should we buy this outpost? Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. In this outpost, we can actually uh, maybe build a tower, I guess, and then it's a bit too early for the siege works because we need upgrades. We need at least forge plates and heavy armor on our. Oh, here, soldiers! Peel back, peel back, peel back. Abort mission. Now, uh, Urukpit is kind of nonsense. Let's build a tower um, just to feel a bit more safe. We are losing the mills though, but it's okay. We will have a bit better protection very, very soon. Oh, here's a tower there. Okay, I mean. Now it's too late to peel back. We have enough power points for the industry. I'm pretty tempted, but I'm not gonna go for it. I wanna actually go for the, for the Tainted Land, guys. So basically against Gondor, you don't need Freezing Rain as Isengard. What you need is definitely the Field of Fires, which is gonna boost your resource income. Oh, he's right. What? He has heavy armor. That's why he didn't die. Which is gonna boost your resource income like crazily. You know what I'm saying? Armory now. What is happening? My units are so <laughs> in, a, in a corner, you know what I'm saying? Please. Uh, the mill is going to be taken down. It's fine, it's fine. It's fine. We will have now the power points we need uh, for the Tainted Land after creeping the Vorklia. Let's capture this. Protect this. He has heavy armor, that's why he's not dying that fast. And of course, the tower is just distracting. Doesn't do anything or not much against the... We were able to creep that, but he got the money. Oh my goodness, man. That's so unlucky. Now he can even fight us here if he's smart. Yeah, he's smart. He's fighting us. That's bad. Like, yes, of course, like a level 3 Gondor Knight with heavy armor and our pikemen were badly damaged. When he's not trampling them, he's just standing still and fights them in medium range. He can take them out. And also Troll was killing the other pikemen. I cannot believe that. Like, very unlucky, boys. Is this gonna be close? Nah, he's respawning when he's fighting. Are you kidding me? Well, well, well. <laughs> I was even cash floating so hard. Okay, you know what? We gotta build the Siege Wars, guys. 
We gotta build the siege fortress. We gotta we gotta make a move now. So now I'm gonna show you a different combination of units in, in the Isengard faction. You can combine, as you guys know, your Urukai with crossbowmen, and also your pikemen with the crossbowmen. But combining Uruks with the pikemen is also a possibility. And when is this actually a good thing? It's a good thing when you are when you need to fight against soldiers and against gunner knights. So basically, we will be extremely effective against structures, right? That's very important that you, didn't, that you need to understand that. But in exchange, oh my, he's so lucky, dude. In exchange, we will lose um, lots of movement speed. So get some rams, at least two of them, and then we're gonna make a move. Our money is not looking great yet, but as we will be able to recapture, let's use Palantir to actually reveal his Hobbit, guys. Let's do that. Hobbit, there you are. Nice. Because we need the settlement back, you know? We will need a bit more money to do the stuff as we are doing right now. Let's put them inside the outpost, the crossbowmen. Capture this mill. Put them in the porcupine formation for the defense. Yes, arches. Now, he's actually putting arches inside the towers. Did you guys see that? <laughs> Alright, luckily we are not going to attack this side. We are going for the base instantly. And he won't expect that. Hopefully, we will be able to deal a great amount of damage. Let's build a work pit too. And capture this mill at the bottom left side. So now we have lots of lumber mills. Oh, he's going to buy this. Oh no, are you kidding me? Oh, let's, let's be back with the pikemen. They can't do much. Let's combine them now. Wait for the second ram, and then we're gonna make a move. More pikemen. Okay. Um. Yeah. Now this has to be effective. We will. I don't know, man. We will see about that. Our second Urukpid is gonna also hit level two after the Uruke. That means we can even recruit more pikemen and again. Protect this ram, please, 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 please. Now you will see the units in action, boys. Now it's a different story. When they fight in the medium range, they will lose against our units. The Uruk cross, uh, Urukai pikeman combo is very strong. Again, weak against archers, but strong against like anything else. And the weakness, obviously, as you can see and tell, is the lack of movement speed. The fortunes. Even if he can't finish off the castle, we gotta deal some damage. I mean, he's building a tower, but that's not a big deal. I will just literally one-shot this tower with my rams. Just protect them by the block. Micro around. Now just one-shot this tower, please. Boom, boom. You see what I mean? Like, he was just investing or wasting, rather, 800 resources for that. And I take it. <laughs> I take it. War priorities now. We, we, we need something for the map control. He has still many, many farms, and that's not good. Let's use Warchant. He's trampling. I was actually uh, expecting him to use the Alvin Wood, but uh, was not the case. If, you know, just in case he was using it, I would just cover that with our own Tainted Land. Let's combine them two. Now we gotta focus on the structures only. Let's kill the Well and the Blacksmith. We will deal economical damage. We can also bring more units in the meantime. We have now Fire Arrow also purchased. Uh, just focus down. At least break one one more part of the wall. Very important. He's using heal, but that's fine. Again, we are putting lots of pressure on him, which is gonna give us the time to do other stuff in the meantime while he is forced to defend himself. The city is going down in no time. That's good. If he can ki kill this level, that would be actually massive. Because I believe he was not able to purchase the night shield upgrade just yet. Okay. I mean, we are also dealing, like, you cannot replace those level 2, level 3 structures, you know? We might be even able to actually... Uh, oh, he has combos also. But we might be even actually able to destroy his castle fully. Which would be a GG situation. But he's killing our rams now. Let's go behind the farm. And let's make a... Oh my goodness. Well, well, well. Okay, that's a bad thing. Um, now nah, let's commit on it anyway. Like, the problem is, we are feeding him with so many power points now, he's gonna potentially have Eagle Summon very soon, guys. We gotta need more combos, and this Uruk... Ah, uh, I mean... He has level 6 Gunner Knights now. And with this Dacho D, they should be, they are of course, able to... We need Lourdes, but we need Banner first. We need Lourdes leadership later on. Especially, you know, not only because of leadership, but just in case he might get Gandalf on the field as an anti-hero. Yeah, we won't be able to finish him off, but it's fine. We were able to destroy lots of buildings and break two, two 
Did we break two parts? I think we, we broke two parts of his wall, which is amazing. Now we gotta defend this outpost if we can with the ballistas and the combo battalion we have. Because I believe he gotta make a move now. He has to take down this outpost, otherwise we're gonna keep doing what we just did. But also we need to find a solution to the outpost at the bottom left side. Let's give them fire arrow and then put them back inside the outpost. This way they will have more damage output. There we go. Combine them. There we go. Yeah, he's making a move. Do you see that? Protect the Ballista. Go in front of the Ballista. He's summoning the Alvin Warriors. We need to use Warchant here, am I right? I think we gotta use the Warchant, yeah. Can we win this fight, though? That's a big question. I mean, as long as Ballista is around, we should be able to win this fight, kinda, right? But our combos are dying in no time. Oh boy. Uh, we need we need Lords. Uh, definitely. Actually, let's cancel the upgrades and get Lords on the field. And then we can use the Lords to creep the trolley at the bottom right side. That's the plan. Let's demolish the armory because we have purchased everything. That's gonna be a waste of spot. Don't overcommit. We will be defending this area and we are only one power open away from having no more problemos with the money, guys. Like, the field of fires means 100% more income from the laminar mills. And we have right now around 5 laminar mills. So it's gonna be like if we would have like 10 laminar mills. You know what I'm saying? Very effective. Okay. So I'm afraid because Warchan is on cooldown. But I also wanna take down this outpost from, his, from our opening at the bottom left side as soon as possible. Let's use the Lord to creep. He might be forced to give up this area. He's using heal. Yeah, we, we will be forced to disengage now. It's going, it's going to be hard. But we have some crossbowmen inside the outpost. Maybe they can make something happen. We shall see. He's desperately trying to dig down this outpost. Which makes sense. Because it's right in front of his face. Archers. Let's focus down the combos with the archers inside. And try to deal with the level 6 Gondonite. With our pikemen. And Uru combo. Yeah, they are tanky. You know, These combos are also highly leveled. So it's hard for us to deal the damage we are looking for, and we are also lacking of damage leadership. Without Warchant, our DPS is not the greatest. But he's peeling back, that's good. Looks like we will be able to keep it protected at least for now. Lords, come on, please. After killing the troll, we will draw the sword and go into melee range, just like now. We need a little bit more for the, for the field of fires, come on now. We need more units though. Again, committing to the outpost. We need to wait for the Warchan for that. Okay. Yeah, two parts of the wall broken. So it's gonna cost him 4,000 if he wants to be able to repair that. Which is a lot of money, of course. And we can tell that he has not many farms outside. I believe he has like three farms outside. While we have like six, you know, or five. And we have two outposts. He has also two outposts. So he, he's not poor or something. He has also money, but I believe he has more money. Now commit on that one. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. On the Twitch channel, let's use the formation. Give them bleeds and banner. Don't. Uh, let's go for this. Yeah, there we, there we go. Now you see our lamin mills are glowing, shining bright like a diamond. And now we shall have no money problemos. Should I use War Channel offensively or defensively to protect this outpost? I'm not sure, man. I, I believe we gotta lose this outpost anyway, so... Let's leave the money. We gotta make a move now. We don't need the 200 resources from the treasure now at this point. Dude, he's killing our units in no time. Ah, oh, man. Let's recapture this to be annoying. <laughs> because it costs, it costs us only 600. Now we gotta make a move to the bottom left outpost. Yeah, it's, we, we won't be able to win this fight. He has high level Condonites, combos... We have no leadership because we need to use Warchant now offensively to destroy this outpost at the bottom left side. Finally, let's go. Hopefully, it's going to be enough to destroy. Lourdes has to join the party. You also need Saruman very soon. Look, our money is looking good now. Just focus on the buildings. Burst on everything fast enough. Saruman is on his way. That's good. Oh man, he has eagles, I mean, and we have nothing to kill the eagles too. And now we gotta make combos, boys. <laughs> now we gotta make the Uruk crossbowman combo. He's so far ahead of us, powerpoint wise. Like, he was just some, I mean, 
Like, he's only 10 power points, even less than that, because he's killing stuff now, away from his army of the dead. And while we need still over 15 for our Balrog summon. So long story short, I'm assuming his AOD is going to be ready way, way sooner than our Balrog summon. The only good thing for us is that we have enough money right now. Even though we, we look poor, but it's okay, we just, you know, we're investing 5,000 for Saruman. Let's peel back. Um, I want to group this pikeman at the top right side. Why? Because I want to actually attack one more time the outpost at the bottom left side. This time with Saruman. Uh, once the eagles are gone, they don't have much time left anymore. We can make a move. And because he has to pay attention to the bottom left outpost, we gotta make a move also with the pikeman. We gotta upgrade every single one of them. And try to deal damage to his main castle. That's the plan, okay? We are also able to save one of the combo battalions. That's dope. Okay. Let's combine them. We are still poor, but it's okay. I mean, we are investing so much money, making more units, wargs, combo. Oh, he's summoning the Alvin warriors. Hey, you know what? Saruman, show them your quality, my friend. You better run, my dudes. You better run. What are you doing, elves? Sit down. Boom. Nice Alvin summon, by the way. I take it. Thank you for the power points. Thanks for, thanks for the experience. Now we gotta make a move. Eagles are on cooldown. Elves are on cooldown. Now I'm assuming we should be able to destroy this outpost. And also go inside the jeans. We also need to give them blades. Now we gotta make a move. Okay, guys? I don't know if we will be able to finish off the castle with Pikeman all alone. But at least we will be forcing him to build some defensive structures. Fortune. We need to use Warchan here. Let's use steal his horses with the warm tongue and trample down his own combo. Alright, level 6. Saruman doesn't really matter because Saruman has already unlocked everything when he's on the field, level 5. Let's send them to our main castle. Hopefully our towers and furnaces are going to be able to look. You see, all of a sudden he's building multiple defensive structures. There's a lot of money he has to invest. And unlike Isengard, Gondor has not that great amount of resource income. So even if we can deal a little bit amount of damage to the economy from the Gondor player, it should be a good trade. We just were able to destroy this outpost too. Can he actually save this level? I think he was able to save the Gondor Knights. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine though. Now we need to recapture the map control at the bottom side. We will be able to kill the Citadel. It looks like we won't be able to deal much more damage than that. It's fine. Because money is not a problem. And we will grow even more rage now after capturing those settlements. And also destroy this farm, maybe? Yeah, there we go. I would like to build even more Uruk pits now. Because, guys, we need to be prepared for this army of the dead summon. When he uses army of the dead to kill our army, we need to immediately be able to make another army. You know what I'm saying? And for that reason, having additional Uruk pits is the key. Especially when we can afford it. We have no money problem problems, as you can see and tell. We captured now the bottom left out, uh, settlement too. Uruk pit, Uruk pit. There we go. Now we make something happen. Hopefully we will be able to destroy this outpost, which doesn't have, I believe, like a great protection. We have Saruman and Lourdes. Lourdes is almost level 4. Level 5 is a massive power spike. Let's not fight on the Alvin Wood. Let's move aside. On the Alvin Wood, we have no leadership. And for now, we have only Saruman leadership, but it's still better than nothing. There are 13 power points away from the Balrog summon. So ideally, we want to just stall until this is going to happen. Let's now recruit spam units all the time, you know? We want we want to be command points capped. We want to have units until it's not possible anymore. Speechcraft to level them up a bit. We don't need to use Warchant there. It's not fighting for this outpost. There is no need of wasting that. And after destroying that, we will be capturing this outpost for ourselves. And we will build multiple siege wargs for the ballistas in explosive mines. Saruman, it's your time to shine. Fireball. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. Boom, son. On your face. Level four and a half lords. That's dope. You gotta peel back combos, man. You cannot handle the situation. Saruman is gonna just kill you. He has no leadership either, you know? He has no Farami, no Boromi, no Gandalf. I'm actually surprised that he was never going for Gandalf all game long. But Outpost has... Look, he has archers or uh, rangers inside the Outpost. Let's destroy that. <laughs> They are hitting very, very fast, you know? You can already, you can always tell that these are rangers. About, you know, because they have like a crazy amount of attack speed. But it's not enough. To save that. 
dope. So now, let's try to fight for the map control at the very same time again. It's a big map, but it has actually two paths only. Like, you have one gigantic path on the left and one on the right side. And you want to use these paths all the time to put pressure. You can also combine them with the crossbow man, because I'm afraid that he might go for... that he might have the power points very soon for the army of the dead. So I don't want to send them all to the same spot, because if this is... if we do that, he's gonna use army of the dead and kill literally everything. So... What I want him to do is use Army of the Dead to kill our Saruman, Lourdes, and this army, and then we have another army waiting, you know, just for the worst case scenario. Again, have always like a plan B, you know what I'm saying? Combine them all together. Look how much money we have. Triple Siege Warwicks, you know, upgrading units left and right. And look our money. It's rising to the sky. I'm telling you guys, I think that is the best eco in the entire game. I have one more time on your face, son. Hey, why? Do it. Oh, Trebuchet? Fireball! Dude, Saruman is fishing it out so many power points. Let's destroy the level 3 farm. Hurt this economy. Let's give them all the upgrades they want. We can maybe put them on the right side, you know? And try to destroy the outpost at the same time as we are putting pressure on his main base. Then we need to kind of force him to make a choice. Which side you want to defend first? Oh, Trebuchet, I see you. I mean, he cannot afford Gandalf, I'm assuming. Look, his base is still open. And we can even break more parts of the wall now from the other side. I want to actually sacrifice my War Cradles just to be able to kill his um, Trebuchet. You can also use Warchant on them. Because with Warchant, they might be even able to fight against the combos. He's making a move now. Oh, they are getting knocked down. Let's use Warchant on them. Let's use Holability and Warchant at the same time. He's using Alvin Summon. It's fine though. Uh, we have 110% uh, damage leadership on this Warcraters. But again, they are not very, very strong. Especially against fire. They are very vulnerable. Let's use fireball on this combos. Boom. Oh my goodness. Saruman, dude. Boom. My Saruman is shining bright like a diamond. I am down losing this Warcs because I'm command points capped. I couldn't recruit any of these Ballistas. Because I have no command points. Now that we lost them, we might be able to finally recruit some of these. Now we gotta make a move. Our Warchant is on cooldown. That's not the best thing in the world, but it's fine. Now we finally have some space. You know what I'm saying? Again, guys, we have in total three Uruk pits and one work pit. That means even if we lose army, you can see we have such a great sustain in the economy, you know? Might use the um, uh, Eagle Summon once again, maybe. Should be again back up for the Gonzo player. We need eight power points uh, for the Balrog Summon. More ballistas. Oh, eagles. Can we target them, please? Sometimes it's so hard to target the eagles. Do you do you see that? They don't want to attack the eagles, dude. That's bad. He's gonna just get fat here, right? He's gonna get even more fat. After killing all these combos with the eagles. That's so bad for us. It's even worse if we have no war chant. Can we not attack this trebuchet? No, we are not able to attack over the wall. Unlike the trebuchet, though. Which is pretty unfortunate. Can destroy this tower, no problemo. Please kill these eagles already, dude. That's crazy. They don't want to kill the eagles. He was also able to destroy. I'm, I'm washed up, guys. I don't pay attention anymore to anything. I'm so bad in this game. Sorry for that. Again, didn't play one v one for a long time, so excuse me. One of the eagles down. The other one was able to survive. It's fine. It's fine. We need more units now. Okay. I want to fireball these Gondonites. Let's go. Hopefully he's not paying attention. We might also be able to catch them with the Bork Riders and the Palantir. Palantir is increasing our movement speed. Look at these Eagles. Let's use the Cripple on Eagle. We'll also deal a great amount of damage. Oh, he's paying attention. Okay. And there is no point of chasing because he can just turn and fight. He's stronger than our Bork Riders. Bork Riders. Eagle is not gone. I mean, we could not kill the eagle. He signed us up. That's bad because we missed the experience. Let's get some mi mines now, shall we? Explosive mines, left and right. Break the wall. Saruman, you need to join the party. I have so many units. It's I can't. I don't even know where they are. You know. Okay, it's moving now, but it's fine. We already broke one part of the wall, so it's not a big thing, big deal. And when you kill Ballistas, then you don't get too many power points from that either. But when we kill Gondonites on the other side, we will get lots of power points. We might be able to destroy one of the Siege Wargs. Also not the end of the world, we have still two more. 
and again replacing them look our money we have over seven thousand almost eight thousand now um should not be should not be a problem well, let's use war chance can we steal them primo one time there we go let's send them inside so they die fireball oh that's gonna be a massive fireball boom and the full combo is gone just like that that's what i like to see and he was investing 2000 now to repair this wall either you know as well like he's broke i'm assuming like i don't think he has any lots of money anymore let's send the explosive mine inside the jeans should we deploy oh he's destroying our minds but it's okay you know while he's trying to do that we are killing also a couple of his condonites and we are only five power points away from getting the Valrog unlocked. And Valrog is once again is able uh, to one-shot the entire castle of Gondor. Look, he's paying attention. He's so scared of the explosive mine, which is which makes sense. But it's so funny when you see them running. You know, why are you running? Why? Are... <laughs> okay. So basically, we have look our money, guys. We have over nine thousand. We are rich. No money problem. And then we can just spam now explosive mines left and right. Be more on. Saruman, why did we enter this? Do we have fireball? It's still on cooldown. Come on, spam fireball. Can we hit, hit the Gondor Knights and the mine at the same time? Oh, imagine. He was killing the mine. No, he didn't kill the mine yet. He just killed the mine now. Oh, man. Uh, he's, he just killed almost his own Gondor Knight. So annoying, but anyway, we're just gonna break the wall slowly but surely with our ballistas. And then we, we need maybe some more work riders to actually send them inside first. And this way they can kill the trebuchet. He's being annoying by trying to destroy our lamer meals left and right but it's okay money is not a problem but it doesn't mean that we should lose the focus on the map control map control leads to victory guys okay two parts of the wall broken on each side so if he wants to repair it he has to invest eight thousand which is lots of cash and i don't think he has the money i don't think that i'm afraid that army of the dead might be there very very soon we shall see though Let's destroy this. Let's use uh, Wizard Blast on the Gondonites. He's paying attention. Let's use Fireball. Fireball. Pew. Okay, we are getting also a lot of power points. Only four power points and less than that. Alvin Elias. More Ballistas are required. Money is not a problem, but Command Points are a problem. We are trying to put some pressure on the other side at the same time. Just destroy this. Three power points only from the army. Oh, there comes the army of the dead, yeah? But you know what? When we lose Saruman and Lourdes, we will get so many power points. Watch this, guys. Please watch my power points as Saruman is going to be taken down. Please. Boom. You see how many power points we got? And if he kills Lourdes now, we will get the power points for Balrog. Watch this. We got to just revive them and we have now the power points for Balrog. There we go. Now we need to just be patient and wait until the army of the dead is disappearing. Be, if we can take down this outpost, it will be massive. We have also Palantir to get the vision we need. Because in order to summon things, you need to first of all have vision. Now we can spam lots of units. We are just reviving our Saruman and also our Lords at the very same time. And getting more units. But we have still almost 5,000. The outpost is going to be taken down and there comes the demon. Wait a second. But it's going to be a win-win situation, am I right? Yeah, we gotta kill, we're going to kill his combos at the same time. Oh my goodness, delicious. Okay, fly inside, ignite. Come on now. Kill the outpost or the sitter first. There we go. Oh, I messed. I messed up, right? How many units? Oh, well, that's horrible. Oh my goodness, I messed up, guys. Sorry. Oh, I don't think it's gonna be enough to kill the base now. I messed up, my dude. I messed up. It's also hard to control because it's hard to, you know, I don't want to have excuses, though. I messed up. It's my bad. The, out the outpost is going to be taken down. It's fine. Let's fly. Ignite. You see, he didn't ignite, guys. He didn't ignite. Or did he ignite? I don't know. No, he didn't ignite. It would deal much more damage. Maybe we can do it. Oh, we are so unlucky. Breath fire. Come on now, please. Are you kidding me? We didn't even destroy his steeple. 
I'm washed up in this game, my dude. Oh my goodness. I'm so tilted now. No way we did we feel this. You know, I, I potentially did that like 1,000 times. And now is the time to feel. But it's okay. We have the War Riders. And you know my plan already, guys. I gotta send those War Riders inside the jeans to destroy his castle. And with that also his last hope. So let's send them all inside the jeans. He has not much inside his castle anymore, and I believe he has only a steeple. I mean, of course, he will be rebuilding them by now, but still, everything he's going to build now is going to be only level 1. And level 1 structures are quite easy to be taken down. So now I want to just close my eyes and actually right-click on his castle, but let's not do that. Let's actually be focused for a single second. And let's make a move. So we need to destroy the outpost and the castle pretty much at the very... Oh my goodness. At the very same time. We have no command points, you know, for the Uruks. Now we have finally command points as we are losing some crossbow men. So now go inside Warc Riders. Warc Riders! Okay, let's see. We have Warch and we have whole ability on them. Let's use Fireball on these. We have some Archers, but it's okay. Let's use Warchant. Wait until they group. Whole ability. Burst on, uh, he has trebuchet on top of the wall. He's building even more than that. But you can see we can kill this city in no time. Now we just gotta focus down the buildings. Nothing else. Saruman was able to kill almost the full battalion of the Gondonites. Is he paying attention though? I don't know. But we need to... He's calling the Rohirrim. He's desperate. Gondor goes for it and Rohan will answer. But Rohan is not gonna be there in time to, today, my friend. Come on now. I think we can do it. Just focus down the buildings. That's all I'm asking you for. Lourdes, you also draw the sword. You go ham, my friend, with carnage and everything that you got. Let's go to the outpost in the meantime with Saruman and the Uruks. Carnage and kill the Tita. Kill the Tita, Lourdes. Come on. L kill the Tita. And yes, the castle has been defeated. He's not defeated yet because he has still two outposts under his control, but it's fine. Losing 5,000, by the way. He needs to now invest 5,000 if he wants to be able to rebuy that. And of course, I won't allow that. I, he won't be able to rebuy this. Trust me on that one. Like, our Warcraters are still able to win this fight. No problem. His Rohirrim summon is going to be gone very soon. Use the bow. He's summoning the elves. Okay. We need to destroy this outpost, though, in the meantime. His Rohirrim are going to be gone soon, right? Make a move now from the other side. Get more units at the very same time. Keep spamming units all the time. Rohan, buy the, buy the castle. Buy the castle. Nice! <laughs> oh, he still did now. Trust me, no one. Oh my goodness. Now he can't destroy it anymore. We have Saruman coming. Elves. And he's gonna leave it. And that's it, boys. Isengard is victorious. I was struggling. I'm washed up big time, dude. I was having such a bad performance today, guys. But it was kind of making the game a bit more entertaining. I hope at least. Let me know in the comment section down below. I believe my Saturn one was kind of clean. My Balrog was like 1 out of 10. It was really bad. And overall, it was a good feeling to play on a 1v1 on the map to Nero. It was a nice game, to be honest. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe for more content like this in the future. And also, check me out on my Twitch channel for live streaming. Because I would love to get to know you a bit better. Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. The link for that is in the description down below. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, stay Beyond Standards. Peace out.